So I'm going to give two examples of interference. Uh, one is interference with sound. So we have a speaker right here, and we have another speaker right here, and these two speakers are a distance D away from each other. So let's say that D is going to be two and a half meters. And both speakers make the same note, middle C. Okay, and so middle C is 261.63 hertz. Okay, now, they're both wired to the same source, so the two waves come out exactly in sync. So if you were sitting right in the middle, then you would hear twice as loud because they're amplified. But if you're sitting over here somewhere, then one wave has traveled a different distance than the other wave. So it's shifted by a little bit. Okay. And so if it shifts by half a wavelength, then what has happened is you've gone from here to shifting half a wavelength. So if it shifted over half a wavelength, that looks like that. And now we're into destructive interference. how much so you got the two speakers some distance d apart if you're sitting over here some angle theta away from the center then you can imagine here draw lines like that then if this is if you over some angle theta here then that's going to be some angle theta there and so uh this extra distance right here is going to be d sine theta. So if d sine theta is half a wavelength, then you get destructive interference and you do not hear that note if you're sitting right there. Okay, so that would mean that sine theta equals lambda over 2d. Okay, and so all we got to do is figure out, okay, what is lambda? Because I gave you, I gave you the frequency Okay, the frequency was 261.63 hertz. Well, you need to know the speed of sound. So let's say the speed of sound is 342 meters per second. So lambda will be C over F. Okay, you plug in those numbers, and what you get is 1.31 meters. Okay, and so now we just need to figure out what is theta. So sine theta lambda over 2d, so that would be, uh, that would mean that the angle at which you don't hear anything would be the inverse sine lambda over 2d. So that would be the inverse sine of, uh, we'd said that was 1.31 meters divided by 2 times, uh, two and a half meters and so that angle at which it becomes quiet is 15.2 degrees off so you would not be able to hear that note now different wavelengths would have different would have different uh wave i mean di different frequencies would have different wavelengths so other notes you would hear there okay but that one note you would not hear in that one spot and so uh, that, that's something that acoustical engineers need to think about. Another example of this is in radio astronomy. So we have a radio telescope, and it turns out the radio telescope picks up signals from a wide range of the sky, and so you don't have very good resolution. You know you're picking up radio signal, but you don't know exactly where. And so what you can do is you can take two radio telescopes here that are a distance D away from each other, and if you have a signal up here that's equidistant between them, then, then, then the signals are in phase, and so we get constructive interference. But if you have something that's off-centered, then the, 
the it goes an extra distance of one, so that means it gets shifted a little bit. If it gets shifted half wavelength, then it's radio quiet, which means you can pinpoint exactly where in the sky the object is located, or at least within within you know a certain angle. So we would want to find out what angle is that. So a common uh, radio wavelength is uh, 25 centimeters, so 0.25 meters. And radio telescopes, if you set them far enough apart, let's say D is 14.7 meters, because you need to have the entire structure separated a little bit. And so, as before, if you're off, if you're off by some angle theta from the center point, then the difference in in distance traveled. So the difference in distance traveled between the two is going to be D sine theta. If d sine theta equals lambda over uh, 2, or n lambda over 2, okay, so so any odd lambda over 2. So if I go uh, uh, 1 lambda over 2, okay, but if I go 2 lambda over 2, it's constructive interference. If I go 3 lambda over 2, it's destructive interference. And so if, if, if this is odd, then that's going to be uh, destructive. And if it's even, that's going to be constructive, which means that, that for the radio telescopes, okay, you would, you would it would be loud here, quiet there, loud here, quiet there, and so it alternates you know, where you would actually be able to pick up the signal. And in fact, you know, as Earth turns, as this moves across the sky, it would gradually go in and out of the signal. And so the question is, you know, what are these angles right here? Okay. So, well, uh, D sine theta equals N lambda over 2. So sine theta equals N lambda over 2D. So theta equals... Uh, uh, um, inverse sine of n lambda over 2d. Okay, and so that would be uh, inverse sine of uh, n, where n, n is 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Lambda over 2d comes out to be uh, 0 0.0085, uh, okay, and so that means that if theta for n equals 1, okay, or actually for n equals 0, n equals 0, theta equals 0, so that's a maximum. So that would be, for example, the radio telescopes and the thing dead center between the two, okay. If n equals 1, that's going to be off a little bit. And so you work out what theta is, and that comes out to be... 0.59 degrees minimum. You don't hear anything. If n equals 2, then you work out here theta equals 0.97 degrees, and it's a maximum again. For n equals 3, theta is uh, 1.5 degrees. It's a minimum, and so it alternates in that fashion. Okay, and so uh, uh, this type of radio telescope array we call an interferometer. And ideally, you would actually have an array of, of, of multiple interconnected sort of things, and then you can get a lot more information about the radio sky that way. And so uh, that's, that's, a, that's an application of wave interference in radio astronomy.